Hey everyone, it's Jacqueline. Welcome back to my channel. And if you're new here, subscribe because I post a new video every single week. So for this week's video, it's gonna be very special because it is my birthday today. Today is March 1st, so I just turned 20 years old, which is so crazy because that means my teen years are over. But my 20s are coming and I'm gonna live it to the fullest because after my 20s, it'll be my 30s. And that's old but for someone who has lived for 20 years you can expect that i have learned a lot throughout these years going through elementary school middle school high school and now in college so for this birthday video i'm going to be sharing with you guys 20 things i learned in 20 years so let's get started Number one are that beauty standards are ever-changing. This means that there are beauty standards in today's society, but they were way different than they were 10 years ago, 20 years ago, 30 years ago. It's always going to change. So it's not about what looks the most attractive or what features are going to make you beautiful. It's really just about what's trending. So the curvy body, meaning like big butt, small waist, big boobs, brunettes even. I remember in the early 2000s, it was all about being blonde. That was the beauty beauty standard but now everybody with darker hair is saying that they're baddies and that that's the new beauty standard now that we like brunettes butter but back in the 2000s that was not the beauty trend the beauty trend was to have no curves the flattest stomach ever the flattest butt and basically just like big boobs so what all of a sudden it was pretty then but it's not pretty now no it's just not trending so just get that in your mind that just because you don't fit in the beauty standard it doesn't mean you're not beautiful it just means that your body is just not trending and you're just beautiful in your own way it probably has trended before in the past or will trend in the future Number two is you don't have to explain yourself to anyone. So back in high school, I had a lot of difficulty saying no to people. It was because I kind of felt bad, but it was also because I didn't want to seem as like lame or like I needed to have an excuse to not do something. For example, someone might say, oh, we're going to go to Disneyland. Do you want to come with us? And back then, lots of crowded places would give me lots of anxiety. So I would tell them, no, I don't want to go. And they would be like, why? Stop being so lame. You should just come, blah, blah, blah. And I would always feel the need to explain myself like, oh, it's because I need to stay home and take care of my dog or I'm going to be with my dad that day. Just some excuse. I would always try to explain myself. But I realize now that all you have to do is just say no. And if they call you lame, you'd be like, okay, well, I just don't want to go. Number three is people come and go at the right time. I used to get so attached to people. Like I would become their friend and I would think that it would last a lifetime. And some of them have. I have friends that have lasted a really long time. But I always had a bad habit of thinking that every single person in my life was going to be there all the time. So when they would leave or it wouldn't work out or we would drift apart, I used to get extremely sad and I would try to reconnect it, but it just didn't work. And now I've realized that God put them in my life just during that one time because I need them during that time and I definitely believe that the relationship you have with people that are around you are literally shaping you into the person that you're becoming because every person no matter how small or big can make an impact in your life so that's the way I see it you know it, it is sad when like friendships don't work out but I'm always grateful for them and I always reflect back to see what did I learn from them or why were they so important in my life during that time Number four is social media highlights people's lives. So this sounds like a really obvious one. I know that everybody knows that what people put on social media is the best part of their lives, but I don't think it really hit me until like two years ago because I feel like everybody knows that it's a fact, but subconsciously it doesn't click in our head. So we'll be scrolling on Instagram and we'll be seeing people posing with their friends, happy pictures, happy videos, fun Snapchat stories, making memories. And we just think to ourselves, wow, am I not living my life to its full potential what am i doing sitting here in bed while these people are out here making memories and friends i have done that so many times but little did i know that people were thinking the exact same thing with my social media. There have been events where I wasn't really feeling that good, but I took a picture and I looked super happy and I would post it. Or I'll be putting Snapchat stories of me laughing and having fun, but that's only like five seconds of the whole day. You guys don't see what happens behind the scenes. Same thing with celebrities or your friends on social media. Number five is it's better to ask people for help. I am the queen 
of not asking for help. I like telling people about my feelings and I like opening up about my past, but when it comes to me actually needing advice or needing help, I'm so bad at that. It took me 20 years to realize that even though it's hard or it might be a little embarrassing or you think that you can do it on your own, it's always better to ask for help. That's what I've learned. It's hard for me to comprehend right now because I still feel like I haven't fully learned that, but at least I've acknowledged that from past experiences. I know that every time I get help, it always helps me heal faster. I'm still working on that because I'm a little bit of a narcissist. I feel like I am the only person that can help myself. I always feel like I don't need other people's help or I can do it all by myself, but in reality, sometimes we just need help and that's okay. Number six is rejection is redirection. I love this saying so much and I stand by it 100%. It's really hard to accept rejection because we always feel like it's a failure, but the only reason why we think it's a failure is because we think about what could have been rather than what outcome happened. Every time I was rejected by something, I always thought, what's wrong with me? Why can't this good thing happen to me? But reflecting on all of the things that I've been rejected by, I wouldn't have been the person I am today if it weren't for those rejections. You don't see why you were rejected and that's why you just need to trust in the plan and just know that it's to get you on the right path. Number seven is comfort zones keep you from thriving. <sighs> This one is by far the most difficult lesson I've ever learned. In high school, I knew that I had to get out of my comfort zone in order to get rid of my anxiety. I thought that maybe if I avoided places that triggered my anxiety, that it would get worse, but it has to get worse before it gets better. So I kind of had to force myself to go through all of those anxiety attacks, go to events with a bunch of people or loud music. And at first it was extremely hard, but I started to adapt to it and I started to learn ways to cope with my anxiety because I was forced into those situations I had to figure out how to cope with it so in a way it was kind of like training my brain to know what to do when this happens and I wouldn't have been able to do that if I didn't get out of my comfort zone Number eight is not all beautiful things look the same so I'm pretty sure you guys heard this this is like a famous quote I think it was trending on TikTok. I heard it before TikTok, but I saw it on there and that's what made me remember that phrase. And it said something like, the sunset is beautiful, but that doesn't mean the flower isn't. But basically it's saying that the sunset and the flower are two very different looks, yet they're extremely beautiful. So there is not only one way to be beautiful, there are multiple ways that someone is beautiful. So if you have big eyes, small eyes, long hair, short hair, big curves, no curves, everyone is all beautiful even though we don't look the same. Number nine, and this is an important one, no one pays attention to you as much as you think. I used to think that everybody was always looking at me, judging me, when in reality, everybody was thinking the same thing. Everybody always thinks that everyone's judging them or looking at them. So that means that everybody's just focused on themselves. It's kind of like when you're in a classroom and you have to say here when they call attendance, and I would always be nervous to say here, I would practice it mentally and I would wait for my turn to come. And then I would finally say here and then I would be thinking thinking about the way I said it for the next like 20 minutes. So embarrassed because I thought everybody was thinking about how I said it, when really everybody was doing the same thing. So literally no one is paying attention to how everybody else is saying here, they're just paying attention to how they're saying it. Number 10 is being yourself attracts the right people. I have had a lot of things that were difficult for me, but this one is definitely not it. I've never had a hard time trying to be myself. If anything, I have a hard time not being myself. I find it very hard to change my personality based on who I'm with. If anything, I just change the energy for who I'm with, but I'm always me, I always stay my personality. And even though I've never had trouble with that, I would like to say that I've learned from it. I've learned that because I've always been myself, I've always attracted the right people. I've never gone in the wrong crowd or I've never been friends with someone that I didn't really connect with. I've always had genuine friendships in my life and if I didn't feel truly connected to them because of my personality then I just wouldn't be their friend. No hard feelings, we just don't click. Number 11 is every professional started as a beginner. I know, right? Crazy. Sometimes we are embarrassed of ourselves to start as a beginner because we already want to be a professional or we feel insecure because someone is better than us, but they started from the bottom too and they work themselves up. It's the same thing for us. We start at the bottom and we work ourselves up just like they did. It shouldn't be embarrassing because someone has to start somewhere. It's normal to start as a beginner. It's normal to not know what the heck you're doing when you're starting something because that's what you're there for. You're there to learn, not to show off your skills. 
So I learned this because I wanted to start a YouTube channel when I was like 13, but I think I uploaded one video and it got like five views and I was so embarrassed that I just didn't want to make any more videos. I didn't want to be someone with zero subscribers putting out videos that didn't get that many views. But that's how most YouTubers started, you know, considering that they don't already have a platform. But most people start from zero and that shouldn't be embarrassing. If you're passionate about it, then you should do it. And that's why I'm here today is because I stopped being so insecure about my views or my subscribers and I'm just starting to do it knowing that everybody has to start somewhere. Number 12 is be a great listener. This is also something that I don't have trouble doing. I've always loved listening to people. I love to sit down and just absorb everything that they're saying. It's very therapeutic to me and I always feel very relaxed when people talk to me. And since I listen to people a lot, I learn from them a lot or I get to hear their perspective on life. Things that I wouldn't have thought of and also I could potentially help someone just by listening to them. So it is good to talk and communicate but always make sure that you take the time to listen to other people. Number 13 is a little more specific, but it's release emotions and feelings into art. I've always been a creative person. I like to draw and color and dance, make videos, write poems. So you would think that I would be good at expressing my emotions in those categories, but I don't really take advantage of that. Back in high school, I used to write poems a lot and I would just pour out all of my emotions in it and I was always really proud of it. And now I can look back at those poems and see exactly how I was feeling, which is really helpful for my mental growth. So I've learned that if I don't know how to fully express myself, I can put it into my art. Number 14 is put yourself first. Like I said before, I always had trouble saying no to someone, especially when it came to people needing help. Sometimes I would prioritize helping other people other than myself. And that was really bad for my mental health because it was a lot of stress for me. And at the same time, I wasn't getting help. So I've just learned that if I'm not okay, I need to tell the other person like, hey, I know you're going through a lot and I'll always be here for you. But right now I'm just not mentally at the place to help you. And even saying that right now just makes me feel so bad because I hate not helping people but sometimes I really can't and I've learned that it's better to tell them the truth rather than kind of just hide it. So please guys, always put yourself first. If someone's not treating you right in your life, don't put so much effort into them if they're not putting in the same effort. That's also another factor in this. Prioritize your feelings and learn what's best for you, not for them. Number 15 is your boyfriend shouldn't be your only friend. I used to think that this was such a good thing about me back in high school. I thought it was so cool that my only friend was my boyfriend because it was kind of like two in one and I didn't really have to go through so much effort for making plans because it was just the two of us. But I learned through experience that that is really bad and it limits the connections that I could have with other people. I only get one other opinion, which is my boyfriend's, when in reality, I should be getting multiple opinions from other people. And also if I got into a fight with my boyfriend, who am I gonna go to? I now have friends that are boys and girls where I can get different opinions. I can go to people, which is really healthy for me because that helps me with my socializing and I can grow from multiple relationships. Number 16 is people mostly live in their heads. What I'm talking about is that people pay too much attention what's happening here rather than what's happening around them. And this can really take a toll on how you create memories because most of the memories that you're forming are just thoughts, which really sucks because you're not taking advantage of the memories that you could be creating with other people or finishing your accomplishments and basically just having fun. For the longest time, I was living mostly in my head. So in moments where I should have been living, I was constantly just overthinking. So think less and live more. For example, you might be going to the park and your head is just over flooded with thoughts to the point where you're not genuinely enjoying the nature that is around you, observing your surroundings and just appreciating life as a whole. Number 17 is relationships are hard. I've heard a lot of people say that their expectations were not met because of what they portray on movies or TV shows and how they don't show the actual hardships of a relationship. I feel like that is also true for me, but I think I've always known that relationships were hard. I just didn't know to what extent or I hadn't fully experienced it yet. And what I've learned is that relationship doesn't always have to be about love, it's about commitment. Of course, you have to love the other person to be in a relationship, but if you don't have that commitment, it, the love isn't enough. So you could love someone deeply, but if you're not putting in any effort or you're not working really hard to make the relationship work, then it's just all going to crumble. So I learned that relationships aren't hard because it's hard to love someone. It's actually fairly easy to love someone, but it's hard to commit to someone. 
Number 18 is be your own cheerleader. Sometimes you have to hype yourself up even though there's lots of people in your life that could be lifting you up. You can't always depend on them. It's always nice to get those encouraging messages and those supporting people in your life, but at the end of the day, you only have yourself and you owe it up to yourself to be supporting in anything you do, to always uplift you, to bring up your self-confidence. You have to be your own best friend and make sure that you know your worth. Number 19 is find a blessing in every situation. This is critical to learn. It's really easy to look at a situation and find out how it negatively impacted you, but that's only gonna tear you down. It's just gonna make you depressed and you're gonna feel like your life is not going in the right direction because you're gonna feel like you're not satisfied with it because you feel like everything bad is happening to you. When in reality, there's always a blessing in every situation. I always used to be upset with my past self because I didn't get to fully experience the high school life. I was always staying indoors, I didn't go to parties, I didn't talk to anyone besides in the classroom or like at school. I didn't go to football games or any events. And I used to really put myself down for that, but I realized now that the blessing in that situation was that I was able to learn so many things, such as how to observe, how to analyze, how to reflect on myself, and different coping mechanisms that I can share with other people. Now I can share my experience and my feelings and I feel like I understand other people a little bit better than I would have if I didn't go through that. I can't tell you how many times I've connected with someone from the topic of anxiety because I can understand them and it feels like such a blessing to be able to communicate with someone about that. And the big 2-0, this is the last one, but is to over-exaggerate the celebration of life. What I mean by that is the fact that not a lot of people have enough appreciation for life in general. Like, I don't think people realize how blessed you are to be on this planet. Breathing air and being able to make all of these connections and friendships and grow from them and having endless possibilities and what you can do in life. There's just so many things about life that we don't celebrate enough and we need to over-exaggerate it. Go on top of the roof and just like, appreciate the stars, go run in a park, go dress up, do your makeup, just take advantage of celebrating because to me that's when I feel the happiest is when I'm celebrating. I just can't wait for the pandemic to be over because I want to go to concerts, I want to go to festivals and carnivals. That's another way you can celebrate life and I'm really excited for that. Okay guys, so that was 20 things I learned in 20 years. If you guys want, you can write down your age in the comments below and maybe like one thing you learned throughout those years. I think it'd be really cool to see what you guys have learned. And I'm just excited to see what I'm gonna be learning in my 20s. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hopefully you learned something just by me saying this list, but that is all for today and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.